Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the mathematical definition of big O. Now, some of you may not be really into mathematical definitions and things, but I think it's important that we look at this and talk about it because big O notation is a really cool thing, actually, and you might not appreciate how cool it is at first. What's really great about big O is that it lets us sort of strike a really nice balance between being vague and being precise. And what I mean by that is like in the last video, right, we were talking about how we didn't want to get super in depth when we did algorithm analysis. We don't want to say, okay, this algorithm takes exactly 17.9 seconds to run. And we don't want to say this method is going to be 22 machine code instructions when it's compiled. We don't want to look at that level of detail for these things. So we want to be kind of vague in a way we want to ignore those implementation details and be able to do that. But we can't also be like totally vague and really loosey goosey and just say, Hey, this algorithm's kind of fast. This one's kind of medium. This one's kind of slow. We need to retain some precision as well when we're talking about these things. So the nice thing about big O is that when we say something is big O of N, that lets us ignore some things like the coefficient, like whether it's 5n or 7n or whatever, and also any sort of like constant effect, like a plus 17 or a plus 22 or whatever. We can ignore some parts of the way that it scales, but we still like retain the essence of it being a big O of n algorithm. And so the mathematical definition we talk about is the thing that lets us do that. The thing that lets us ignore some parts of a expression, whereas we can't ignore other ones. So let's go ahead and take a look at the mathematical definition. And then we'll talk specifically about like what things it lets us ignore and what things it does not let us ignore. So let's go ahead and start that. All right. So here is the mathematical definition of big O. If f of n and g of n are functions, then f of n is equal to the big O of g of n. That's true if there's some constant value c that we can multiply g of n by and have g of n be greater than or equal to f of n for sufficiently large values of n. That probably didn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense on first pass. So let me pull this into the whiteboard and then we can kind of play around with it and pull it apart. All right, there we go. So now let's look at a specific example so we can see what this is and why it works. And I'll use the example we looked at in the last video when we found that the steps as a function of n was equal to, I think it was two times n plus four. That was our steps as a function of n for the algorithm to add to the end of a singly linked list that we came up with. So this is our f of n and our g of n is equal to just n because we said that this f of n was equal to big O of just n. So here the f of n, this is like your original function that you want to simplify and g of n here is your simplified function. And we're saying that this is true, that we can say that this whole thing, this f of n is equal to just big O of n. We can say that that's true. If there's some constant value c, that we can multiply by g of n, which in this case is just n, and have it be greater than or equal to the original function for large values of n. So basically it's saying there has to be some constant that we can times g of n by for it to be bigger than f of n for big enough values. So let's think about that. What constant value c could we use? Well, there's a lot of them. Uh, we basically just have to pick something bigger than two. So I'm gonna pick three. And so what this is saying is that if you take this constant value C and times it by G of N, then you get a new thing, which is three N. And it's saying that this has to be greater than or equal to two times N plus four, four sufficiently large values of N, meaning it doesn't have to be bigger than it right away. And in this case, it's actually not. It's just that eventually this one has to be bigger as N increases. So if we were to graph this thing, we would see that 2n plus 4 would be something like this. It would start at uh, y-intercept of 4, and it would have a slope of about 2. So that would look like this. This is like our f of n line. 
And then our three times by n would look something like this. It would intercept it just at zero because it doesn't have a constant, but it would have a greater slope. It would be something like this. It's not a terribly straight line, but you get the idea. This would be our three n line here. And so it's saying that it doesn't have to be greater right away. It's just that as n gets bigger, it eventually has to pass it up. And so this satisfies the definition. It basically means that our thing that we said is the big O of n, like this, it has to be just a constant value less than the original function. So essentially it's saying we can ignore this term right here because we can get that value back essentially. We can multiply it by a constant to get back above what this 2n was. And we can also ignore this term because as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the four here doesn't make any difference really. It's the two times n that makes a difference. So that's how this definition sort of works and plays out for the example we saw last time for the singly linked list. Let me pull up another function and we can talk about it again. Okay, for this time, let's pick our f of n to be something slightly comp more complicated. Let's say it's 3n squared plus 1,000n plus 2,000. Now, what we want to do is we want to be able to simplify this such that we ignore the things that we aren't necessarily going to care about but maintain sort of like the way that this grows as it increases. So I'm going to say for g of n, what we're going to do is we're going to say that it's just equal to n squared, meaning f of n here, this 3n squared plus 1,000n plus 2,000 is just equal to big O of n squared. The definition of big O lets us ignore this factor here all together and this factor here all together as well as this constant coefficient right here. So let's see mathematically how that works. It works mathematically because we can find a number c that we can times by n squared such that it's eventually going to be bigger than this value here. And so we can pick again, it can be a, as low as four. Eventually, 4n squared is going to be bigger than this mess over here, this 3n squared plus 1,000n plus 2,000. It's going to take a while, but eventually this is going to be bigger than this all over here. And that's because as n gets really big, this n squared term, we say that it dominates the rest of the expression. As n, you know, when n starts off, as, if n is like 10, then this is gonna be the biggest thing here. And when n gets to be bigger, it's going to eventually move over to this being the biggest thing. You know, if we have, let's say n is being a million, a million squared times three is way bigger than a million times just a thousand. And likewise, a million squared times four is gonna be bigger than all of the rest of this over here. And so that's what big O's definition is saying. It's saying that you can simplify this f of n function, however complex it is, down to something that's just simpler. <laughs> and you can do that as long as it's no more than like a constant multiple of the original function as n gets to be really, really, really big. So there's sort of kind of two ways of looking at it. There's this mathematical way of looking at it where you find a constant and you make sure that that constant can be times by your new simplified function and have it be bigger than the original function for big values of n. That's the mathematical sort of like basis for this thing, this big O notation. But I find that oftentimes students don't really like thinking of it that way and don't jive with it super well that way. So the simplified way of thinking about it is that if you have a function like this that has like multiple terms, like this one does, this one has three terms here, what you do is you find the one that is the biggest when n is really big. So it starts off, you know, if n is just one, this one's really big. But as n gets bigger and bigger, it eventually is going to be this one that's bigger. But as n is really big, it's the n squared term that's going to be bigger. 
that is the biggest term as a function of n inside of this expression here. So you find the one that gets biggest as n grows, and then you take that thing and you get rid of the coefficient and you just use that part of it. So we can say that this is O of n squared like this. All right, I hope that makes sense. Let's look at a few more examples. All right, let's say we have this one here. Steps as a function of n is equal to 3n plus n cubed plus 1,000. Then we can, again, think of it in the two different ways. Uh, we'll do the simplified one first. The simplified one is you find the biggest term of n, which in this case is the n cubed, right? And then you take it without any coefficient. It already didn't have a coefficient, and you use that. So we're going to simplify this as just big O of n cubed. The mathematical way of looking at it, again, is to notice and observe that you can find a coefficient, which you could put inside of here and times this n cubed by, such that it would be bigger than the whole rest of this expression. In this case, you can just use, I mean, you could actually use one, but we can just go ahead and say two. If we have two n cubed, then that means that if we look at this now, two n cubed for a really big value of n is going to be way bigger than this original expression. And so this works and the definition of big O of n tells us that we can do it like this. All right, let's look at a trickier example, maybe. Let's say as our function of n, we have, let's say, 34n plus 1,000, let's say 10,000, again, the constant doesn't matter, so I'm not really doing anything, plus 2 raised to the power of the n. Well, this one here Maybe this wasn't so tricky, um, but this one here, if you look at it and think about it, this 34n isn't the biggest factor in here. And again, it doesn't depend, of course, on the order. You know, I put the biggest one at the end actually here. Likewise, this 10,000, even though it looks really big, um, it's not going to be that important as n gets really big. As n gets big, this one is going to totally dominate the rest of the expression, and these things are going to be small peanuts. Because again, the point of algorithm analysis is how things scale up as n gets to be really big. And so we don't care about how much time things take for small values of n. We're only interested in as it scales, how does it grow? And as it grows, this thing is going to be way, way, way bigger than the other two terms. So we ignore them completely, and we just say that this is big O of 2 to the n. All right, let's do just one more here as we're talking about this. And then we'll, in the next video, talk about some actual examples looking at algorithms and finding out the steps and doing this sort of like all synthesizing this whole algorithm analysis process. But for now, we're just talking about sort of the math of it. So let's look at another expression and see how we simplify it with big O. Let's say it's, well, I don't know, uh, log of n, which is a thing we're going to see plus n squared plus 8n cubed plus 53n plus 2. Well, again, what you're going to need to do is go through these terms and see which one is the biggest one. Again, not right away, but as n gets bigger and bigger. Right away, you know, if n is equal to just 1, this is going to be the biggest term. But we don't care about what happens when n is equal to 1. We care about what happens when n gets big. When n gets big, this is going to be the one that gets to be the most important. If we have n being a million, 8 times a million cubed is way bigger than these other things. These things are all like small potatoes. They don't matter at all compared to 8 times a million cubed. That's going to be way, way bigger. And so we're going to ignore all of these other terms. And we're also going to ignore this 8 here because, again, we don't really know exactly what that's going to be when we run it. So we're going to say that this is just big O of n cubed. So hopefully that makes some sense. It tells us, the big O definition tells us what things can be ignored and what things can't be ignored. And again, there's sort of two ways of looking at it. One is the sort of mathematical definition way where you think about what constant you can multiply by the thing to make it bigger than the original expression. But the other sort of like more pragmatic way is just to find the biggest term in the thing and drop the coefficient, and that's your big O of n. 
So I want to separate this video out from the other one because that's sort of a different topic. We're talking about sort of just the mathematics of it. In the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some examples of actual algorithms and talk about finding the big O of them. So I'll see you for that.